Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual I start with announcements. So some really cool stuff is coming up that I want to talk to you about. Um, Dr. Peter Bregan, you, if you've been watching this for a while you know I refer to him often. He's a very very important psychiatrist in Ithaca, New York who um, is often referred to as the conscience of psychiatry because um, he has spoken out from the very beginning of his career about drugging patients and institutionalizing patients and what a bad idea that is in general. He's never drugged a patient in the 50 years he's been practicing. Written a lot of books on the topic of how to help people with psychological issues and um, in an actual caring way that resolves the problem instead of drugging, etc. Well, anyway, he's our business partner in developing a mental health program. Uh, just two weeks ago, the state of Ohio approved our psychiatric drug withdrawal program which will be offered through our school and this program includes a lot of live instruction but it also includes some videotape lectures with Dr. Bregan so we're bringing him here March 30th through April 2nd uh, to, um, uh, to record some of these videos and we're going to allow about 25 very lucky people to spend that four-day period with Dr. Bregan um, participating in sessions where we tape the lectures but you'll be able to ask questions and that sort of thing and um, there will be a Friday night dinner the group of you 25 lucky people will get to have dinner with Dr. Bragan and talk to him on a more social level and uh, I think you will really enjoy this if you get to take part in it so if you go to our website at wellnessforumhealth.com uh, we will shortly have some information posted there about this we're putting the details together uh, for this event and um, you want to be one of those people I know I'm looking forward to it uh, and I've spent a lot of time with Dr. Bragan and I am looking forward to uh, four days of hearing uh, what he has has to say about common psychological disorders like ADHD, PTSD, um, uh, depression, anxiety, bipolar, etc., and uh, dr drug withdrawal and all kinds of related topics. Um, two other things I'll mention really quickly. We have a special thing going on for the month of February for, um, for anybody who would like to participate. It's just February. First thing is, if you're um, a smoothie groupie, you know, we have this phenomenal smoothie here uh, with amazing ingredients. It's the way I start my day every day is using these four ingredients to make a smoothie. And if you get a six month supply, we're gonna let you have a certification course free. The second thing is the Cancer 101 certification course. Um, I really want some people to take this for a variety of reasons. We need to be really helpful to cancer patients and they don't get much ob objective and good advice. So um, here's the deal. During the month of, um, of uh, February, if you sign up for Cancer 101, um, it will be on a video platform, but I'm going to teach it live this summer. So you get to take the live version. I'm going to give you $300 off the course. I'm going to let you have the vaccine course for half off, and I'll give you a free subscription to the Health Brace Library. Plenty of incentives there. So if you're interested in either of our special offers or you want to spend the weekend with Peter Bregan, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. Okay. I want to talk about bone spurs today. Bone spurs are small growths on bones which develop in areas of the body that are inflamed near the sites of injury to things like cartilage or tendons and where tendonitis and degenerative arthritis are present. The most common locations are the back of the heel bone of the foot and in the spine near degenerated discs and they're usually um, found in response to people complaining about pain, so some type of imaging is how they're detected. They don't always cause symptoms, but when they do, common ones include pain, numbness, and tenderness. And there sometimes can be weakness when the bone spurs irritate the skin, nerves, tendons, or inflamed tissue that's nearby. Heel spurs are particularly painful and can cause difficulty even walking. Heel spurs often develop in people who have inflammatory arthritis and other inflammatory conditions. When the spurs develop on the bottom of the heel bone, plantar fasciitis often results, and then sometimes the plantar fasciitis starts first and then the spur follows due to the inflammation in the area. The plantar fascia is thick connective tissue that supports the arch at the bottom of the foot. Inflammation, strain, injury, arthritis can cause tears in that area, uh, in the particular area that covers the heel bone. And this can be caused or even aggravated by poor gait when walking or running, poorly fitted shoes, um, being overweight and obese. These are all contributing factors. One of the ways that the body protects itself is to increase bone formation and cushion the area and then sometimes to develop new fibrous tissue around the spur. Pain is usually worse in the morning if you have plantar fasciitis when you first get 
get up after prolonged periods of sitting, and sometimes exercise even makes it worse too. Heel spurs can be located at the back of the heel where they're associated with inflammation of the Achilles tendon. The spurs cause a lot of tenderness and pain, which is made uh, much worse when you're pushing off the ball of your foot when you're walking, for example. Spinal spurs develop as degenerating discs allow for excess movement between the vertebra and the joints. The ligaments that connect the bones of the spine become thicker in an attempt to lessen and control that excess movement. These thicker ligaments can become calcified and the entire inflamed area can be ripe for the development of bone spurs. Spurs that cause pinched nerves in turn can cause numbness, tickling, and pain, and can also cause weakness in the areas of the, of the body that are affected by the particular nerve or nerves that are inflamed. Poor posture, bad diet, and injury increase the risk of spinal degeneration and the subsequent development of spurs. Now diet in particular is an issue because um, since spurs are related to degeneration of the spine, diet can cause, uh, can increase the risk of degenerative disc disease and the subsequent development of the spurs. Studies show that aortic calcifications are predictive of future disc degeneration, with those having aortic calcifications being twice as likely to have disc degeneration as those who do not have calcifications. Calcification of arteries, soft tissues, and development of bone spurs are caused in part by excess calcium intake from calcium pills or supplements and also from eating a lot of calcium fortified foods. Unfortunately, the mentality about nutrition still is, if a little bit is good, a lot is a lot better, and that actually is not true and the opposite is true. Um, furthermore, disc degeneration is associated with high cholesterol, interestingly enough, and occluded lumbar and middle sacral arteries, both of which are caused by eating a diet rich in animal foods, protein, and fat. In fact, I attended a conference sponsored by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Actually, we help sponsor this conference every year. And two years ago, a very interesting lecture was delivered on the relationship between cardiovascular health and uh, degenerative discs and lower back pain. And so um, one of the many, many um, effects of eating poor, a poor diet, as many of you know, is cardiovascular disease and one byproduct of that can actually be degeneration of the spine. So the standard American diet is a major contributor to bone spurs throughout the body. For other reasons too, one of which is the high acid load of animal foods often results in the body drawing buffering calcium from the bones in order to maintain blood pH in normal range. All this calcium can't be resorbed and it often isn't excreted, so consequently it's deposited in clumps or sometimes spurs. Dehydration adds to the risk and frankly most people in our uh, country are dehydrated. Another risk factor is body pH that trends too much the other direction toward alkalinity, uh, which can result from drinking high pH water, super alkalized water, taking antacids, which reduces stomach acidity. This results in lower calcium absorption. Stressed bones then try to protect themselves by increasing calcium deposition, which increases the risk of developing bone spurs. One other thing that isn't diet related is that bone spurs can develop from repetitive activities such as sports or if you have certain um, occupations like drilling or carpentry that have a lot of repetitive movements. Treatment, if you're going to look at it, traditionally involves rest, which may not cause pain, but, but certainly doesn't fix the problems that I've just described to you. Uh, stretching exercises, and for heel spurs related to plantar fasciitis, wearing a boot at night to keep the foot extended so that the tendons and ligaments don't contract so much during the night. Orthotic devices and shoe inserts can take pressure off of plantar related spurs and heel lifts can re re um, reduce the pain associated with um, Achilles related spurs. Soft cushioned walking and running shoes instead of the normal shoes that we all wear for walking around every day can be helpful and reduce irritation to um, inflamed tissues and also reduce pain. Strategies for reducing inflammation, the traditional ones, would involve taking anti-inflammatory oral uh, medications. 
Um, the problem with this is these drugs create, uh, cause side effects like GI bleeds and leaky gut. Um, they're not a terrible thing to use once in a while, but they're really a terrible thing when you're using them almost daily to relieve chronic pain. They really shouldn't be used for long periods of time. Local injections, including steroids, are also used to relieve pain. Not a good idea because it's difficult to find the right spot for the injection and also because long-term outcomes are worse. And I will be recording a video on this topic next week because uh, after I wrote this article, I decided that we probably should have something about the difficulties and downsides of steroid injections. So stay tuned for next week. We'll talk about this some more. Um, Heel spurs are often surgically removed in order to restore the ability to walk, and sometimes there isn't any choice, but the problem is long recovery times, and if you don't address some of the things that I've been talking about, such as weight and um, gait when walking, uh, calcium pills and bad diet and all that sort of thing, spurs will just develop all over again, and I've seen many people over the years that that has happened to them. Better options, you're not going to be surprised when I tell you this, it's to change the diet and other factors that lead to bone spurs. There isn't really very much published research on healing bone spurs through plant-based nutrition, but many people have reported that spurs dissolved or at least stopped causing pain after they had been on a plant-based diet for a while. Dietary change helps in many ways. In other words, we may not have published studies showing that you put people on a low-fat plant-based diet that minimizes or eliminates animal foods, and here's the results. But um, if you take a look at the differences in uh, dietary patterns, there are several ways to explain how somebody might get better. Um, eliminating or significantly reducing animal foods lessens the acid load lowers inflammation levels. It almost always resolves reflux, which means you won't have to take antacids, which are part of the problem, as I explained earlier. Eating plant foods high in vitamin C and other nutrients uh, helps in forming collagen and rebuilding tissues after injury and prolonged inflammation. And then well-structured plant-based diets lead to weight loss, which addresses one of the causes of spurs. Um, some people have reported, and I have to say this all comes under the category of stories, I can't cite research articles here, but people have said apple cider vinegar, uh, turmeric and ginger are helpful. Um, apple cider, you can take it daily, a couple tablespoons, or you can dilute it in water if you want to. Um, turmeric and ginger can be used in prepared dishes or taken in, the, in dietary supplements. Uh, not much established risk from using these types of supplements. So the worst case scenario is you don't get better, but I don't think anybody's going to get any worse from having tried these things. Uh, cryo ultrasound combines cryotherapy and ultrasound, and what it does is it increases circulation, uh, speeds up the elimination of waste from the treatment area, and, com and uh, promotes faster healing. It's been shown to relieve pain for people who have a combination of plantar fasciitis and heel spurs. And um, this is another one of those treatments where there's some evidence to indicate that it helps. Not much downside to trying it. I certainly think it's a much better idea than having surgery. Um, in fact, almost all bone spurs can be successfully treated without surgery, and uh, although few doctors recommend anything alternative. Um, but I think the best part is that bone spurs can be prevented if you follow a few guidelines. The first one is adopt an optimal anti-inflammatory diet with very little or no animal foods that is low in fat. The second thing, don't take calcium supplements and eat a lot of fortified foods. Don't drink super alkalized water. Achieve and maintain healthy weight and body composition. Drink at least 64 ounces of filtered water every day. Make sure your shoes are fitted properly. And resolve postural and alignment issues that affect joint function and gait. And by the way, not only will doing these things help to prevent bone spurs, and in many cases help to resolve bone spurs, but these are the types of things you do to avoid coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes, weight gain, autoimmune disease, I mean, all kinds of things. So the breadth of the effect is pretty amazing. You won't just get rid of the bone spurs, you'll take care of some other issues too. All right, that's all for today. As usual, I'll pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.